Well, what's going on, everyone? Happy Friday Eve. I'm Judge James, and this is a Thursday night review. And, uh, you know, I thought I would try to wear something purple tonight for this being a very purple evening, but my wife got me this shirt for my birthday. I got two very special gifts yesterday. I got this shirt because my wife turned our entire living room into a Disney Polynesian Resort experience. So that was pretty swell. Lex says it's a good look. That's awesome. I'm glad someone approves. Uh, my, my dad, who is a pen guy, got me this Retro 51 Creepy Scrawlers Glow in the Dark pen, which is pretty, uh, I think it's pretty rad. It glows in the dark. It's pretty cool. It writes very nice. So I think I'll be able to uh, make some fun characters whilst holding that pen. I, I usually lose pens, but I try to be careful with the ones that I get as gifts. Uh, almost sometimes too careful to use them. So anyway, well, thank you for, for joining, whether you're live on Twitch right now or if you are watching on YouTube later. My hope is this is one of those videos that'll get you know viewed and shared quite a bit uh, or should I say this is a video series that'll be viewed and shared quite a bit because tonight I'm starting a three-part, three-week deep dive on the sweeping Dungeon Crawl Classics epic known as Peril on the Purple Planet by Harley Stroh and so many more. So this is going to take a few weeks because when I first tried digging into this, there was, there was no way I was covering this box and everything that comes with it in in one night. If I did, it'd be a two-hour video. And I don't want to put people through that. So out of popular demand, we're covering the Purple Planet, but we're going to cover it for a while. Um, even tonight's episode, tonight's show is going to be long. Greg says it should be interesting. Yeah. Uh, I even did my hair for this. I combed it back. I just got out of the shower and I combed it back, but as time goes on, it will poof out, much like the weirdling sun of the purple planet. It'll get poofy. Um, <laughs> so just to review my review rules that I have, anything I review on Living for Crits on these Thursday night shows will be something I've own, I own, something I've read, and preferably something I've run uh, at a game table, but I'm always open to suggestions. This is, uh, I've been doing one product or topic per week, but tonight uh, I feel like I really need to spend some time with this box set because I had such an amazing time experiencing this this box as a, as a judge. And then I was able to be in several play tests of Harley's uh, Warlords the Purple Planet board game, part of which I was able to incorporate into this adventure uh, in the very last uh, couple of sessions. So I, some folks might be jealous of me for that. Oh, looks like uh, Jonah and Marlene are on. What is up, you two? I hope that there's, uh, you guys are having an awesome game-filled evening uh, tonight or this weekend coming up, maybe. Um, so anyway, Peril on the Purple Planet, the, the three-part uh, deep dive, which maybe I should call it a crash land instead of a deep dive. I don't know, maybe. All right, so here's how we're gonna do this. Tonight, we're gonna do my initial experiences with this box set. We're gonna unbox it and show you what's in it in case you can find a copy of this uh, somewhere. I know it's out of print now. Uh, my hope is, I, I wanna think that there's maybe, I'd love to see something on the horizon with this. There'll be more Purple Planet coming out at some point, all right? Whether it's a relaunch or a Kickstarter uh, for a, a renewal of this, that'd be fantastic. Uh, but the, so tonight's gonna be unboxing it, going over what's inside, and reviewing the setting itself. Oh, you can get this on PDF too. Just just to, sh to say, I mean, you you can get this. I think on Drive Through RPG still, so you don't need the box. Uh, part two of this video series will be I'll be reviewing the the adventure itself, the title adventure, Peril on the Purple Planet, as well as Escape from the Purple Planet, which is the zero level funnel that is located within. And I'll be going over Lost Tombs of the Ancients, which is a book I never used and totally forgot was in here until I cracked it open this time. And inside this thing, 
uh, is is another series of of some more short adventures that I could have used, but didn't in my in my Purple Planet gaming. Uh, part three of this uh, this experience will be going over the additional adventures that take place on the Purple Planet, and that is uh, let's see here, the Rock Awakens is one of them. Okay, and I've run this as part of my campaign with the Purple Planet. This is by uh, Terry Olson. Uh, I'll be running. I'll be reviewing uh, Synthetic Swordsman of the Purple Planet, which I'm running Memorial Day weekend as a as a a, a what's it called a reunion game for the crew that went through my Purple Planet experience originally. And I will be uh, also reviewing. It's not here yet. It's one of the few products I don't have. The, well, for for Goodman. But there was one more, and where where the heck is it? There was one more uh, item I purchased, and that is uh, Sky Masters of the Purple Planet, which is a six-level adventure, I believe also by Jim Wampler. I don't, didn't own yet, forgot about it, so I ordered that today. Whether I'll be able to run that one or not uh, before the, the episode three of this three-parter, I don't know. I was considering doing a, uh, including the review or discussion on Neon Knights, but I'm gonna be running this at DCC Days, uh, which is an adventure that takes characters to the Purple Planet. So, but I'm not. I'm gonna save this for a future episode, maybe maybe an episode four of this series, it depends on how it goes. But the on part three, I'll go over the, the, the shorter adventures that I'll have played two of these by then, as well as a discussion on how to use the Purple Planet for uh, Mutant Crawl Classics or Dark Trails or X Crawl or even Lankmar maybe. All right, got some comments here. Uh, it's okay. So Joan and Marlene are cleaning and painting minis. That's awesome. That's that is the perfect night. Uh, and then uh, Mark Floyd says Harley is working on a return of the Purple Planet. So I think we'll get a book much like we did for the Chain Coffin. I'd run over and grab that book to show you what that looks like. But aside from this shirt, I'm wearing coffee, coffee pajama pants, like really giant poofy coffee pajama pants. Because through this quarantine, I wear pajama pants like all day, all night, when I'm outside, wherever. And I don't know if you want to see those right now. So we're not at that point. All right. So... Let's talk about what's in the box uh, itself, okay? So I'm gonna unbox this this thing and just go through it. Um, and I'll put the stuff behind me. So, uh, oh, here we go. All right, it's the cover. Can I sit that there? Will it stay up? Odds that it stays up. It doesn't. Maybe if I use my my box my my, my fleeting luck bucket. Hey, look at that! That looks professional. Oh my gosh. Can I move over a little bit? Now yeah, look, look at that. That looks great. I'm so proud of myself. So in this box, uh, you get a Purple Planet GM screen. Or judges screen, I'm sorry. Uh, inside this is all Purple Planet stuff. What's great about that is that if you have your regular judges screen for DCC, you can have both out, and this is going to cover you for random encounters, stuff about the kith, which I'll get into the kith in a second, uh, and how the relics work, which I'll also go into. Um, yeah, on this side featured is the great art, the Doug Kovacs cover, the wraparound cover. Uh, you can't see it if you right now, but if you go into my Walls Dungeon Tavern YouTube video, though, and you get the tour of the Walls Dungeon Tavern, you'll see this really cool... I have this not framed, but posted on the one wall in poster form. And it's this really cool, I, I, I glued it down to a swirly uh, like car, like black uh, card stock. And for the longest time, that was the head of my bed. So my, I have the coolest wife for many reasons. Besides Polynesian Resort, she let me put this giant purple planet picture above our bed, um, which I don't know if it just shows in our relationship. We'll put this right here. Look at that. This is starting to look pretty cool here. We have the Peril on the Purple Planet adventure itself. Now, this adventure is a 32-page hex crawl. I will go into this adventure in detail next week, including a lot of the experiences that I had in it. Uh, Mark Plord, who is joining us uh, in the chat on Twitch, 
he was one of the players in here playing as Floyd Pink, the warrior, and Nutbiter the Manimal. Because we did a little experiment and let him, his, uh, Floyd's, I think it was Floyd's character, right? Floyd's War Shih Tzu we allowed to turn into Nutbiter the Manimal to see how Manimals from MCC handle DCC. But we'll cover this next week in more depth. But this, this is a 32-page adventure that is literally one of the most action-packed, coolest hex crawls of all time. Crap, I didn't delete anything, did I? I hit a button. All right, put that right there. Uh, also in here is the Purple uh, Planet Companion. We're going to talk about this tonight. This is the, uh, the, the a 64-page uh, behemoth book about the Purple Planet. All the details of the world goes into backstory, goes into more details about you know what's happening on that weird, weird world. A player's guide, the Purple Planet. If you're going to print this out, you can print these out for your players. But it's everything from special Purple Planet, Planet character sheets. It's got uh, the runes. So one of the things in this game is that every relic, and I'll discuss those shortly, has a rune code to use, and you have to punch in the runes. So instead of just telling players, roll an artifact check, or roll a perception check, or roll an intelligence check, they have to learn how to use these things. And that's just freaking cool as hell. Um, every artifact in the main adventure is featured with a rune chart. So the players can take this and take notes. This is the map for the hex crawl and where the players start. We didn't use this. We used some map builder program that Mark uh, mapped for us. Mark, if you could remind us about what you used for this. And then Mark mapped because I'm so friggin' lazy. I would just said you had to use that. Player notes for all of the creatures they encounter so they could write down bits and pieces about the characters they have. Uh, the mushroom forest key. Every mushroom in this world does something different. And uh, in uh, Doug Kovacs' uh, picture, you can see every mushroom has a, has a number. That's just every mushroom that players have to experiment and figure out what they do. Now, my players did not mess around that much with the mushrooms. They did a little bit. But that wasn't something they did. And they still finished the adventure. It just goes to show this is an adventure you can play through in many ways. Uh, Mark says it was Hex Kit by Cecil or Cecil Howe. Uh, and then finally in here, the back page is just something to put places, notes, uh, other notes, you could NPCs. You could give this to the players. Uh, this is a really great guide. Would you want to just hand them the whole thing? Print out separate sheets. I would, I would do that. Um, I wouldn't mess around with uh, with with ruining this copy, uh, especially if it's hard to hard to acquire nowadays. Uh, inside also is the Purple Planet book of handouts. Uh, this thing here has all of what I just showed you. Uh, I'm sorry, some of what I just showed you, including the the runes, but also pictures of what like this is the first scene the players see. In this is like the the show them, you know, of uh, the Purple Planet. It's their first view. Um, you know, the, a picture of a ziggurat, you know, it's like, woo, that's awesome. There's so much cool stuff in here. So I'm not gonna, I, I shouldn't, there are spoilers tonight. So if you're a player, stop watching. Don't, don't harm your GM or your judges, uh, you know, experience by, by cheating and, and, and watching these videos. All right, anyway. Uh, Greg says, is the character creation specific to the setting or standard DCC character creation? Standard DCC character creation, but there is a character class called the Kith that I'll talk about in a few minutes here. But you can bring any characters from to this world. Uh, it's very much like John Carter. So the Edgar Rice Burroughs stories or the very underappreciated Disney movie, whichever you prefer. I prefer the movie because as some folks know, I don't like to read stuff that's not gaming material. I tend to be really crap at reading fiction. But uh, the adventure is characters from another world getting sucked here, stranded here, and having to go home. That's the core adventure. Escape from the Purple Planet is the same thing essentially but this is a zero level funnel where you are a character from really from earth that gets sucked to the purple planet uh you are an interplanetary hero you're from you you you, you find your way here and you have to get off the purple planet but quickly 
and this is a short funnel I've run this two or three times it's a really really fun adventure I'll be discussing that next week just like I'll go over briefly lost tomes of the ancients or tombs of the ancients which I haven't played with there is a special there is a special Kith critical hit chart that I didn't even realize was in here until this unboxing because it was hidden in my box underneath uh, the Goodman Games uh, initial issue of the Dispatches from the Dark Master. So that's what's in the box. All right, uh, let's discuss the setting itself, okay? So he, I'm going to read to you, sit back and relax. I'm going to read to you from the back, the back of the Purple Planet box. The Purple Planet, where tribes of man-beasts wage an endless war beneath a dying sun. Where mighty death orms rule the wastes, befouled winds whistle through ancient crypts, and forests of fungi flourish in the weirdling light. Where ancient technologies offer life or quick death. Bereft of patron, friend, or god, your survival depends on quick wits and a strong blade. Will you and your companions stand as conquerors atop this alien land, or will you, be, you fall beneath the blast of an ink-black death ray, just another corpse left to litter the waste of the purple planet? That is the purple planet. And it is like, I don't know, like heavy metal like rock and roll awesome from start to finish the the world itself is this blasted wasteland scorched and mutated by this weirdling sun i love that word uh apparently no nothing like like there's no autocorrect li likes that word i i it's one of those harley words harley stro words but i love weirdling the weirdling sun and it, you know it invoked for me originally a, when i got the box set something that was dark sun so i was a big dark sun fan for ad and d second edition but in the end it felt so different to me and it's its own thing so if you're looking to experience like dark sun um with 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 with, with dungeon crawl classics why you'll get that wasteland feel it's a different it's a different thing it, it's it's a you know, it, it's it's you do get that experience of wandering and, and trying to take care of your resources and that feeling of survival. But it's an alien world, and from start to finish in the main adventure, your characters realize they don't belong here, and it does drive them to leave this place. Although there are those that might want to stay. Uh, so again, I said feels like John Carter. It's a fantasy Mad Max. Uh, I got a lot. Of, I was. I think when I started running this, it was around the time that I was infatuated, or one of my my rekindlings of being infatuated with Mad Max Fury Road, which I've watched like a bajillion times. Uh, and uh, I, would you call it sword and ray gun? It's not sword and sorcery. Sword and sandal and ray gun, maybe. I don't know how you d describe this, uh, but I. On the Purple Planet, there are, in my mind, five key uh, features of... Oh, Lex said Sword and Planet. There we go. Sword and Planet. I knew there was something for it. I would say there's five key distinguishing features about the Purple Planet that make it stand out on its own. <coughs> uh, I'm sorry. I should have coughed in my arm. I apologize. I know pandemic subject matter expert should have coughed into his arm. I didn't. So... All right, I'm gonna go over these five. And, and you know what, if, if as we're going through here, if you feel like I'm missing something, especially Mark who's been through it, or if you feel like I'm putting too much on one of what I think are the five main features of this setting, let me know. Because I tried to pull out what everything is. Lex, I'm gonna get sick. I'm not sick. Of course, I said that like two months ago, and I ended up being very sick. Um, these are my five, these are the five key features. All right, the first is the weirdling sun. It dominates the day, um, and the rays of this weirdling sun destroy, mutate, and warp everything that it touches. 
Uh, Non-native creatures suffer a D3 stamina damage every single day under the sun. They have to rest to get it back and spend days out of the sun. So only resting and then drinking moon milk, which I won't say where it comes from, but, you know, again, spoilers, but that can bring some aid. So what does this do? You're on this big open wasteland you have to travel. Well, it, for our party, it forced them to travel at night, which brings all of its own problems. You lose your visibility, your ability to see how far you can see, your ability to navigate, and there are things that come out at night as well that are their own challenges. So another player group of player characters might re just try to use the moon milk to travel on the planet, and once they find that, some might find other spells to shade themselves. But the sun, the weirdling sun, and I, you, you, you have to play that up. And in this world, its 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 rays are always present. The next thing is the green stone and the green stone shards. There are these magic uh, green stones and crystals in the game. They're your currency. Uh, they are your fuel for any relics that you find. They can be used to augment your spells. They could like amp up your spell burning. But most importantly, in the main adventure, they're your ticket home. You need those to get home eventually if you want to go home. And there are only so many of these green stones themselves on the planet. The green stones, these huge stones, uh, there's, I believe, three of them in the campaign setting. And you have to go home with two of them. Uh, and where you get them is your choice. Or you could assemble enough greenstone shards to form a greenstone. But greenstone is hard to get. Uh, Greg calls it the kryptonite economy. I think that's a really good term for it. So you're constantly trying as players in this game, and as the players in my group, who had quite a few relics, one very important relic, you're constantly trying to figure out, like, how do you spend the least amount of greenstone and maximize that greenstone while finding more greenstone in the game? So the greenstone itself uh, is, a, is a fuel. I always felt like it was the oil, the gasoline, whatever, in, uh, in Fury Road because Fury Road. The kith. These bad boys here, these somewhat cat-like hulking humanoid savages and raiders that have split into two rival clans, House Kotsist and House Regentor. They battle for supremacy on what little remains on the planet's surface. If you've ever played at Gen Con or Gary Con or as a playtester, the adventure or the, 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 the board game slash war game uh, that's in development, uh, Warlords of the Purple Planet, you've played as the Kith themselves, the Kith Warband. In this game, uh, they're a playable character class as well. Uh, you know, and if your characters die, your characters that came all the way from from Earth, from from Naewon, from wherever you want to bring them from, that's a possibility for your players to play that character. They're the only real civilization on the planet, and even those civilizations that are uh, maybe ruled by higher ups, uh, by uh, uh, you know, you know, they they. The reality is that the Kith drive them. The Kith are the workers. Um, so you know, you have to find a way to deal with them. If you can just go to war with all of them, but if you do that, where are you going to find solace? Uh, relics and artifacts. The ray guns and ray rifles out there will turn the tide of a battle. Silver armor can make a warrior nearly invincible. And a skiff, like what our players have, which looks kind of like Santa's sleigh, uh, can blast across the sands six times faster than a PC can walk. Learning to use these relics isn't just as easy as rolling on the artifact table or making a check. Like I said, you have to learn the runes as players of what to push. And they use the greenstone shards. So you get these cool items, but you have to find a way to use them. And you have to have the fuel to use them. But they can definitely turn the battles. I, I remember, I think Mark's character, uh, oh, he, Mark says we had been so hosed without that skiff. I remember the characters driving that skiff into into combat against legions of, of Kith 
and you, you know jousting from it, blasting from it, using it as a uh, a base of operations. It was a great piece of equipment that they found in a way. It was very they're very fortunate to find it when and where they did, like at the bottom of this acid lake. Oh, there's acid lakes, but I wouldn't say acid lakes are a notable feature. They are but they're not the most notable feature. More than acid lakes, I would say, the fifth item here is the mushrooms. So many mushrooms. I love mushrooms. Personally, I could eat mushrooms all the time. I wouldn't want to eat all of these. They're a source of healing. Some of them are a source of wellness, a source of maybe protecting yourself from the sun, but they also can mean death. And each mushroom has its place. And the PCs that want to survive in this world, they have to figure out how to master the mushroom forest and harvest the right items. Again, my player characters kind of just messed around the outside of the forest and didn't dig too much in. They were dealing most with the wastes and then dealing with uh, the, uh, the, the, the kith. They delved into some of the mountain regions, but they stay away from the, some, from the forest, at least the inner depths of the forest, at least for most of the game. And Mark said he never knew it was a whole mushroom ecology. Um, I did note uh, there is the player guide here, right? And in general, our players on this map, they started here and they went, uh, yeah, they went west, right? I gotta think. They went west and they did everything over here. And it would have been a totally different adventure if they had gone this way. And that's kind of cool that if I ran this adventure, this campaign again with new players, it would be a whole different experience. Mark says he felt like he missed a whole thing now. And uh, you know what? In a way, you did. You know, as players, there's, and I'll go into this when I go into the, the, the core adventure next week. This is what makes this such a great box set. No two campaigns will ever feel the same. There's different ways to beat the adventure, to beat the game, although you're still trying to find your way off of the planet. So I'm gonna reel briefly here, because I know I'm almost a half an hour here, uh, just take you through the Purple Planet Companion tonight, because this is not an adventure. This is the closest you get to a source book uh, for this 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 world uh besides the main adventure itself which i'll cover next week so it is the purple planet uh, companion it is uh written by daniel bishop and tim callahan and edgar johnson terry olson and of course harley stroh dak ultimac edited it the beautiful cover art is by doug kovacs and the interior art is by doug and william mcoslin and stefan pogue uh stefan's work is always awesome and fun as is williams uh, inside this book uh, you will find a list of random mysteries to further add to the flavor or the experience um, as as plot hooks and adventure seeds so uh let's see we have a question oh sorry how much is the box set you mentioned that i missed it oh, let's let's do that real quick the this box set was 59.99 but i think it's out of print so you may have to get but Mark said that they are working on a return to the Purple Planet, which might be a Kickstarter with a reprint of, of this. Or you get the PDF. So the PDF's going to be less. And everything I've shown you so far comes with the box. And I feel like I'm on QVC. These don't. These are extra or separate, okay? These are the smaller side adventures. But uh, everything else comes with the box. Everything behind me, right? That is the box. Uh, anyway, so you have uh, in here the random mysteries that add flavor. Like, so what you would do with this is, you know, you can serve as a random encounter. Like, you know, a faction of Kith raiders has commandeered a pair of mechanical birds of the Sky Masters, and these air pirates have begun a reckless plundering spree. So, <clears throat> if you just want to, uh, you know, change things up for a night, if you're doing a full campaign on the Purple Planet. You know, you could use one of these mysteries as a hook. I think of them a lot like uh, the carousing tables uh, in, in Lankamar. Just something to get your, your characters to do something different. Especially since so much of the campaign or the adventure is a hex crawl where something random happens each morning. If you want less random, you could use one of the mysteries of the Purple Planet. Mark says, call now. Operators are standing by. 
so the other thing uh, in here, there's details about the Kith houses that are featured in the core adventure. There is the Kith player character class, a separate list of occupations. And I found this really useful. So the Kith character class that's located in here has um, their occupations, their trained weapon, and their equipment. How did I use this? Because I use this chart a lot. I actually use that. <clears throat> and here is a Kith gear chart. Whenever the player characters in my game ever killed a Kith, I would randomly give him crap from th both of these charts. I would give them the trained weapon and the equipment from the occupation chart on page 13 of this book and whatever gear was here. So if they killed someone, I would say, okay, well, this Kith had a flint knife, a greenstone shard, which they might have. A distinguishing feature was a massive scar tissue in place of a nose. And by the way, he had a horn carved from death horn, bo horn bone. So that was how I would gear up the kit to make them really feel weird. Beside the fact that you could end up getting extra green shards from these, which was always useful to have. You kill a few kith, you and you roll and you get another seven green stone shards. It's better than money, you know, in the game because it does so much. Uh, Rob is saying, that's why Will sent out a funnel characters. I didn't know what Kith was uh, as a selection at the bottom of the sheet. I get it now. Yeah, Kith are a Kith are a class, but just the Purple Planet. You could use them on any world, but some of their abilities are a little more limited. I'll be, I'll be I'm interested to see how that would play out. For instance, as a class, their abilities are as follows. They're a master of the wilderness. Uh, they don't suffer from the weirdling sun's effects. And that's a really big deal on the Purple Planet. So you're trading off having your wizard or your warrior with your deed die and your spells. If, you're, if that character dies, and now you're going to play a kith because you found kith. Uh, and you befriended some, and that's going to be one of your characters, maybe. Or it will be your main character. But will that power translate off of this world? Maybe it wouldn't. How would the Martian characters do if you brought them back from... Um, you know, from a John Carter of Mars campaign or uh, Space 889. Oh, there, I, I played Space 889 in the Savage World setting, and they're a bit weaker because of low gravity issues on Earth than they are on Mars. Would a kith that, one of their abilities is that they don't suffer effects of a sun if they're not on that world? Would it be as good of a class? They do other things too. They can recognize fouled water and poisonous food. Very useful on the purple planet. They can detect traps and hidden foes in the wild. Uh, their core ability, besides having a decent base attack, is that they are uh, hardened warriors that can burn their personality in something called a focus of will. They can get a, they have a die step process, and they can throw it into hit or damage rolls, strength checks, or fortitude saves. They can also expend their personality and to recover lost hit points. So in the absolute worst case scenario, they can burn their personality down to become feral madmen and women just to become uh to, to to get hit points back it's pretty nuts they get a luck bonus also with simple weapons that they carry around javelin spears and axes so as a character class kind of like a berserker but not quite um I, you know i i would question heavily whether i'd want to play a kith off of the purple planet but on the purple planet itself hell yeah the next thing in this book Relics, relics, and more relics. Is your skiff not covering you? You want to fly around like you're, uh, you know, uh, Mark Wahlberg on the back of uh, Flash Gordon's, uh, you know, flying space skiff. There's a mini skiff that looks like a jet ski. There are ray shields and moon rings and all kinds of cool stuff in here for more relics than you can shake a stick at. They all need to be operated with the rune system. And they mostly need to be powered by greenstone shards. There is a bestiary, the purple planet in here, with more creatures to fight and deal with, as well as some pictures of them. All of the creatures are alien. You won't find wolves and stuff on this world. You will find things like tusk terrors. There's a tusk terror. Holy crap. William McAuslin is finest. Here's another one from William McAuslin. Here is a trilomite. An intelligent creature with the torsos of horned men and the women and the lower bodies of five leg beetles. That's that's rough, you know. Um, I wouldn't want to deal with that thing. 
This is kind of freaky. This is the thawed one, which is a, uh, it's someone who's, I guess, thawed a, fro a once frozen humanoid. You know, just a, looks, yeah, it's, it's like a, it's like a, a, a man, pop, like, a, like a popsicle dude or something. I don't know. Uh, Lex loves the Lorgup. Did I miss the Lorgup? Which one's the Lorgup? Hold on. Lorgup. The denizen of the mushroom for jungle stands on 10 delicate, stilt-like legs. Its body about 60 feet above the ground. The creature is a scavenger and uses long, sticky tendrils to gather carrion from among the fungal groves. However, it will settle for fresher meat. It looks kind of like a land jellyfish. That's nasty. Uh, anyway, that's the bestiary. There's a lot of stuff about magic in here, how it works differently here for clerics, wizards, and elves, how patrons function differently. Some are more connected to this world, some are less. I think Ozzy Dahaka is like very connected here. Um, and then there's a ton of charts on you know different you know mercurial magic for this world how magic interfaces with technology how it works in different environments the one thing that purple planet is a really good job of is it really makes things feel different based on where you are uh, spells cast in different parts of the world shift geolog uh, different uh, geographical effects for instance when a spell is cast in the wasteland you're supposed to roll on a die and consult a chart and i never did this and i'm really pissed that i didn't because it would have made magic so much more dangerous and it was just something i left out again i would have to treat this adventure so differently next time i ran it i feel like there's a lot of moving pieces it can be challenging to run that is for sure you gotta keep track of the of a lot of things you know the 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 gear and the relics and what buttons they've pressed and learned to press what they're how, are they eating are they drinking um is the, what's the sun doing to them have you had enough random effects on them what's magic doing there's a lot of moving parts to this adventure but they're all worth it and you know what if you mess some up like i did oh well i don't think anyone noticed that i screwed anything up unless they did the final section goes over the under planet the underworld of this of this uh of the this this crazy place and some parts that aren't explored or aren't as easily accessed in the main adventure all in all it's i mean this is a great great read and uh as soon as you read the main core the main adventure the 32 page adventure this is a must read at least get yourself like kind of some of the backstory i know the kith information was really helpful for me to role play the kith at the encounter when I ran this adventure, it, we called it Banish the Purple Planet, and I'll discuss a bit more of it next week. But uh, like, like no other setting I've ever experienced, not even Dark Sun, the Purple Planet truly gives you and your players the feeling of being trapped on a world that's deadly, dangerous, and wants to kill you. The, the biggest single threat of the Purple Planet box set is the Purple Planet itself. It doesn't want you there. Your characters should 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 feel like they want to get off the world. I believe it was Mark that said, like he as a player, you know, loved being uh, exploring the Purple Planet, but his characters hated it there, and and that's what the feeling should be. Like the longer you spend there, the more time you spend it's going to get progressively more dangerous and deadly. One of these days, something's going to happen. You're going to run out of greenstone shards to power your priceless skiff. You're going to have no food or water for days, become super weak, and then get jumped by a pack of Kith Raiders. There was one time in the adventure that, I think it was when they were going south of this the mountain range, and they decided to go continue west instead of going south. There was nothing near where they were going. They could have been trapped for days away from everything. There's a chance that they could have died because they didn't find the skiff and they would have died in some of the forests nearby. Um, but you, you could, you could, you know, have, see a city off in the distance that could be a place of solace potentially only to find it a terrible ruin like in The Rock Awakens, which was a brutal adventure. <laughs> 
I ran this game over 13 sessions. I could have easily bloated it up to 20. And in my campaign, I did track food and water, or I made the players track it. I tracked greenstone shards very carefully with the players. Uh, we made sure we tracked day and night cycles. I did a day by day track. Uh, there was 46 total days spent. Um, I think one thing I would share with everyone here, let me find it here, is if you are interested, and I'll put the link to the very last post up, but you can easily scroll down to the, uh, you can scroll down a bit and find the rest of the, uh, the bits and pieces here. I posted, uh, back when I was running this, it was the tail end of my blogging career. Not career, but hobby, because I wasn't making any money on it, right? As any bloggers don't, most bloggers don't. Um, I did blog all 13 of the adventures and what happened in each adventure. So if you are watching this and you're like, I would kind of like to see how a campaign played out, you can just follow the link. That's the part 13, but if you scroll to the bottom, there's a link to all 13 parts as well as all the this is the campaign that started with the sunken city box set so you could read any of the the, the re adventure recaps for their experience so and greg read it look at that so greg is greg gets to pass the test today if i had a test coming out uh so you can go into that and take a look and see is this for you or not look i scratch my head and my hair is already screwed up hold on let me fix it there we go all right this is how i do my hair i wet it I do this perfection perfection that's that's how that's how hair hair should look uh, anyway all right so uh, next week I'm going to move into the adventures contained within the box itself focusing mainly on the namesake peril on the purple planet by Harley Stroh I will share some of the stories of how my players tackled the purple planet survived and returned to their home world all on the service of the God Emperor and then, uh, between then and the next week, all of those, some of those characters, including Nutbiter and Lil Hammy the Pig Paladin, both of which were characters in this game, will get a chance to go back to the Purple Planet and see if they could survive the brutally deadly synthetic swordsman of the Purple Planet by Jim Wampler, which means it has the Jim Wampler seal of death approval. So good luck to those characters. Uh, over Memorial Day, on Memorial Day when we played that adventure, that recap. That's a fifth level adventure and it is, it's a doozy. Uh, so anyway, that's the show on Sunday. Uh, Judge Evie and I are back. I think we're going to talk to her about her two current characters uh, that she's playing and and maybe do some Q&A, just do a bunch of mailbag questions. Am I might dig into some of those? Um, she has a character in X-Crawl right now that is a cleric named Teddy and then she's a character in DCC Lankmar who is uh, why am I I'm Mumania the warrior so maybe we'll talk to, Ju to Judge Evie on on uh, Sunday a bit about her characters and how she's experiencing um, those classes and what she thinks we're playing very regularly now so our x crawl game is every Tuesday we just finished this past Tuesday uh, the the second part of uh, Greenwood of the Fae Sovereign, which I reskinned and retitled, uh, was it Cyber Forest of the Shroom Elf Vegans, and it was a really fun two-parter. We had a really good time with that, so that was that was great. Um, and then uh, we're we're I think we're gonna finish Cheating Death, which is a DCC Lankmar adventure. We we finished that this Saturday. So we have a lot of gaming, and, and I'm very happy to be doing all that gaming. It's really kept my mind off of all the craziness in the world. So I hope you're getting in some gaming too. Uh, if you enjoyed tonight's review, please let some friends know about it and come back next week as we continue our conversation. Share our Twitch channel, share our YouTube page, whatever. Like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, we'd love to keep getting the word out there and uh, and 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 spread the joy of gaming with our low tech. Uh, little vlog series and review series that we do here. I do appreciate everyone coming on and communicating and having a good time. Mark, thank you so much for for being on. Uh, one of these days, I will figure out how to have you know ho like co-hosts on and stuff that aren't in the same room. But until that time, it's this is this is what we do. So that's that. 
Um, and thank you all for being on and stay safe out there and keep on gaming. Have a great night. Enjoy your weekend. And we will see you on Sunday.